we look for a short-term gain and we don't see long-term benefit. That ultimately is going to be our undoing, whereas these fungal networks look for long-term gain, you know, by managing resources in the short term to give rise to the communities of organisms that make the ecosystem healthy. And so they, uh, they have an arsenal of enzymes, and depending on what food resources there are, they release the enzymes that are necessary to absorb that food. So it's a self-rewarding feedback loop. VX has a core, a core, a core molecular uh, uh, compound called dimethylmethylphosphonate, DMMP. Same thing that's in sarin and somin, uh, and, and, and somin that was used uh, in the Japanese subways. They, they killed uh, several dozen people. So very, very potent neurotoxin. But here is an interesting c uh, conflict in uh, laws uh, that we have that are, are out of step w with the science. If you have an organism that could save millions of lives uh, and you're not going to use it because you're afraid of the, of the uncomfortable publicity of the U.S. Defense Department being involved in growing a psilocybin mushroom, yeah. well, this is, a, this is quite unfortunate because, you know, there are ways around that, you know. Um, and so the implications are enormous because you could make lotions and if soldiers were exposed or citizens were exposed to, to VX, you could have these lotions on your skin and the VX then uh, could not enter in through the skin, and you can make filters uh, as, well, as well that will, will prevent the VX from uh, coming into your body. Well, one, I would uh, make sure that we have a, a, a library uh, of, of as many organisms out of any ecosystem prior to destroying that ecosystem, because we may be destroying the very organisms that could save millions of lives, agaricon being one clear example. Uh, that's really important. Biodiversity is essential to human survival, and uh, we're not going to live with one plant, one worm, you know, uh, one animal. You know, it's, it's going to take the very complexity of life in order for us to have life support. So I would have a, uh, a surface area requirement that for every square foot of pavement is created, we have a square foot of forest that is being created. So we have some balance in that respect. Uh, reinvent the packaging industry so every package would become an ecological footprint that would be infused with seeds and spores of fungi. You know, I, I, call it, I call it the life box and, uh, and, I, and something I'm pioneering. And so uh, the cardboard then, the packages then could be replanted. You incentivize students and schools or who, have a, who have the nicest life box gardens and projects, they'll get scholarships, they become teachers of teachers. This has become a matter of fact that every time you get a packaged material that you have something that has seeds in it that can regrow and help regreen the planet. A 1% share of cardboard in the United States per week is 20, it will cover 25,000 acres per week. Well, let's take it at 10%. Let's make 10% of all packaging materials it has to be planted, 250,000 acres of regreening the planet, incentivize the schools, institutions. You can do it you could do it all over the world, you know, and make it ecologically appropriate and zip code specific. So as it becomes more elaborated, if there's a butterfly uh, or a hummingbird uh, that was uh, becoming uh, extinct in Maine, you would have a zip code, uh, a, a zip code, uh, a, a, a zip code specific package that will go to that ecosystem that will give the flowers and the plants that would be beneficial to them. So we could help with rebalancing the ecosystem. Well, what can we do individually? You know, is the best thing, you know, what I like to amplify is if we can entrain within our educational system, within the body intellect of our culture, uh, a new way of thinking, is that we should eat locally, we should invest in the carbon bank in our own backyards, in our own neighborhoods, in our own cities. We should uh, restrict the external imports. We should reinvest with fungi and returning carbon to the soil to build the soil banks. And if we do that individually by individual gardening and villages and, and, and cities, um, then we can amplify that you know, on a larger and larger scale, and that could create a paradigm shift. I think we have the opportunity to reconstruct uh, a belief uh, system, an economic system uh, that is this, you know, we have to, we have really no choice. You know, natural selection operates in economies, uh, it operates uh, from an ecological point of view, and if we don't get our act together 
uh, the solutions are self-selecting. So the self-selecting of the solutions will either have us in or out. No, I, I think that over-specialization and not understanding how to under, understand generalized systems is a, is a fault uh, of our society. And it's so important that we have the basic skills basis uh, to be able to uh, survive. And if you take somebody who's ultra specialized and throw them into survival mode, then I'm afraid they won't have the skills necessary to be able to, 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 be able to continue. We, we have a body intellect of knowledge that we need to pass down to our, our children. And I think it's so important that the body intellect of knowledge has some core elements to it. Basic things, clean water, clean air, food supply. And we're very quickly approaching the time where you can take a Wall Street broker and throw them onto a piece of land and they'd starve. Uh, uh, even though they have all this knowledge and all this knowledge at their fingertips, they're not practicing that knowledge. And without practical knowledge, I don't think you'll be able to survive. What would be a, uh, a kind of deep tissue approach to the current ecological crisis if, if the approaches they're going to try are more like band-aids? I would reinvent the packaging industry so every package would be infused with seeds and spores of fungi. And so the cardboard then, the packages then could be replanted. A 1% share of cardboard in the United States per week is 20, it will cover 25,000 acres.